play the tough defense that they're known to play and uh, don't let the game get away from them. They are not that type of team that can reel somebody back in from a 10 or 12 point deficit. They really have to stay in the game the entire time. And when they come out of that locker room at halftime, they've got to be ready to play. Well, let's play a little game here. I want to give you a name of a Salina player and you give me what your thoughts are and what their role might be tonight. Okay. Let's talk Matt Busher. Matt Busher. Matt Busher is a, is a very strong gentleman, uh, plays down low. I think tonight, He's going to get his uh, medal tested here tonight. You know, Lincoln McKin Lyndon McKinley is a, is a very tall team, and they're going to lean on him a little bit. He has to really get down low, get himself set. A couple turnaround jumpers or a couple layups will really get his confidence going as the game moves on. The player that I really like that's kind of unheralded so far in this Salina team is Mason Ross. Mason Ross, it just seems like they have sure how they're going to fit him in there. You know, when he's in the game, he's, he's getting rebounds. Lots of points, and then, you know, he's back on the bench. He just, again, we talked about chemistry and confidence. Maybe he needs a couple more minutes tonight to build that confidence, get the chemistry going, chemistry going, and get him involved for a longer period of time during these games. Well, the flag is coming down. We're getting ready to pay honor to our great United States of America. We're going to step away listen to our sponsors. We'll be right back, talk more Salina basketball as they get ready for the Lyndon McKinley Panthers on your sports leader, WCSM. Here at the Salina Fieldhouse, Steve Harris, Jason Black bringing the action as the Lyndon McKinley Panthers from Columbus, Ohio get ready to take on the Salina Bulldogs. And getting ready to do introductions right now, Jason, with the starters. But looking around this gymnasium, got a pretty full house for Salina fans, no question about that. But I look in the southwest corner of the end zone over there, and the Lyndon McKinley Panther fans... They didn't seem to make it, or maybe they got lost on their way to Mercer County. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt, Steve. With the, with the inclement we uh, winter weather that we've had, I'm going to just uh, assume that they stayed home. Uh, it, it's uh, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of Lyndon McKinley fans here tonight, Steve. I don't know how else to say it on the radio. You know? Maybe with a one and seven record, uh, they weren't ready to make that trek from Columbus. One and seven and a two hour drive just don't go well together. Probably not, considering that they have to head back that way. No question. Well, the junior varsity game, if you want to hear that score, Salina won that one convincingly by a score of 57 to 32. And la two years ago, I take that back, not last year, but two years ago on this very gym floor, Salina played Lyndon McKinley at that time. The score, Salina 76, Lyndon McKinley 32 in a very convincing win. You know, I'd like to see that again tonight. I know the Bulldogs would like to see that tonight. I know the fans would like to see that tonight, but more importantly, I'd like, I'd like to think that Chris Bean would like to see that tonight. I agree with you. You've got the uh, officials as well getting ready to take over this ball game. Yeah, they're, uh, looks like everyone's taking off their coat. They're getting ready to roll. And those officials getting ready to take their spot right now onto the floor. We'll get to them eventually. Here we go. All right, we turned the page. Okay, here's, here's our officials for tonight's contest. Todd Keller, Ron Smith, and Tom Kloppenstein, I think is how you say it. Kloppenstein, that's Klopenstein. right. Those are some well-named, good names in the uh, uh, area for as far as officials go. No question about that. We should have a very well-officiated ball game tonight. The Bulldogs take the floor. They look like they're ready to play tonight. It's Busher, Bilger, Mason Ross, Bader, and Hoying. For Lincoln, Mc for Linda McKinley, it's Williams, Black, Hughes, Fitzgerald, and Battle. Lyndon McKinley wearing a maroon colored jersey with white trim. They are the Panthers. Salina in their home jerseys. They're white with green trim. Teams come out shaking hands, getting ready to play some ball. Salina's going to be going left to right on our dial. Lyndon McKinley right to left. Officials take their positions. They look at one another. They give each other the nod. The ball's ready to go up, and this game is underway. Lyndon McKinley controls the tap. And it's going to be Corey Hughes who will bring it up. He hands it off to Williams. He'll get it across half court. Guarded closely by Bader. Salina immediately goes into man-to-man. -man. Try to get it inside. Working against Mason Ross. Goes off the backboard. That was Fitzgerald with the shot. Rebounded Hoying. Hoying back the other way. Down the court to Bilger. Hoying wants it from three. Takes it from 20. Good. A strong start for Hoying. Gets that three right away. Bulldogs up 3-0. Back the other way comes Williams. Working quickly. They'll want to push the pace on this one just like Salina will. They do not want to walk that ball up and down the court. They want to get this offense rolling. Salina falls back, although 1-3-1 uh, one, one defense looks like, Jason. 
Uh, looks like Lynn McKinley's trying to find their mojo here. They're just passing the ball around, trying to get comfortable here at the field house. Trying to get everybody involved, get everyone some touches right now. Ball goes to the top, it gets to Hughes. Down it goes to Williams. Williams is going to bring it back up and reset the offense between the circles. He shouts it out, what he wants done. Now, with one minute gone in the first quarter, Bulldogs 3-0. Ball goes to the baseline. They're going to give it to Battle. Battle, the big guy, goes baseline, goes up strong and scores. Back the other direction, here they come. Fast break, Bilger gets it up down low, sends it over across, they're working it across to Mason. Now to Hoying, now he sets the offense. Pointing fingers, getting everybody where they need to be. High-low offense for the Bulldogs. It's Busher down low with Ross. Hoying wants another three. Wants it, gets it, takes it, done. Three more points for Hoying. Hoying is looking good tonight, Dad. He's two for two. You want him to come out strong, you want him to start out strong. That's a great confidence boost for the Bulldogs. Yes, it is. Williams works it around. Left side, they're going to get it to Black. Black gets the ball stolen. It's Hoying. Hoying's doing everything tonight so far in the last two minutes. Bilger gets it baseline. Hoying wants it from the same spot once again. The three rims out, rebound. Panthers, here they come. They're looking downfield. They don't find anybody. They get it baseline. It goes to Hughes. Hughes wants it from 19. No good. Rebound, Bilger. He'll bring it up the court himself. Working the break. Left side, Ross. Ross fakes the three, drives left side, goes up strong, scores. This is really good for Steve. Uh, for Swine and Steve, they're starting to build some of that confidence that we talked about earlier. You're right on the first one, too. This is really good for Steve. I like this. <laughs> the Panthers bring it down the court. Bulldogs with an 8-2 advantage. Ball now in black sands. They get it over to Hughes. Hughes back up to Williams. Over to Black. Hughes, Williams, Black just playing a little catch out front outside the arc. Nowhere to go. Salina packing in this 1-3-1-D, not allowing him to get the ball inside to their big guy, Nick Battle. It's going to be Williams. He'll drive. No, he kicks it back out. And this uh, Lyndon McKinley offense looks a little confused. They do finally get it into Nick Battle. He goes off the rim. No good. Rebound, Busher. Back the other way comes the Bulldogs. It's you know, going to be Ross. Nick Battle's a big guy. 6'2", 230, and he is dominating the paint. He's pushing people around down there. Another triple try for the Bulldogs. This time it's going to be Bilger off the back iron, and it bounces out of bounds. We do have two McDonald's giveaways on triple tries to give away Jason and the first one's going to go to Richard Newting the second one also by uh, Hoying is going to go to Kelly Pfeffenberger both of Salina so we'll keep track of that as the Bulldogs hit three pointers tonight Panther ball going to be Williams get it over to Black Black, Williams, Hughes, he's going to travel. Hughes is going to get called for the travel. It's going to be a quick turnover for the Lyndon McKinley Panthers. And the Bulldogs are going to bring in Fickert off the bench, it looks like. No, they're not going to get him in in time. So Ryan Hoying, he's going to take a breather as he brings the ball up the court, and he's going to walk it up this time. Bilger to the number two slot, gets it over on the right side. Hoying gets it back. Bilger playing a little catch outside the 19-9 arc. Now over to Bader. Bader looks inside to Busher. Not there. He's guarded closely. Ross comes across. No, not there for him either. Up top at the baseline, at the free throw line, they go to Busher. Kick it back out to Hoying. Between the circles. Left side. Under four minutes left to play in the first quarter. Bulldogs lead. Eight to two. Hoying and Bader are going to be content to get that ball just around each other, trying to pull that defense out a little bit. They do get it into Busher. He makes a move, and he's going to be fouled on the floor. You know, Salina's trying to work that ball inside. They've, they've worked around the perimeter, and, and, and Matt Bush is really working hard. He's going back and forth between the blocks. They're trying to dump it in. Uh, they just haven't had luck. He finally gets the ball and gets fouled. Now they go ahead and bring Fickert in. It's going to be Mason Ross who gets a break. Bulldogs take it out of bounds. It's Hoying will do the honors. They get it out front to Bader. Bader goes up for it, gets it, penetrates the middle of that 2-3 zone, goes to Bilger. Bilger doesn't like the shot he has available. Looking inside to Busher now. Around the arc they go, reversing it. Busher, baseline, far side. Hoing penetrates the gap, wants the shot, goes up, back iron, rebound. Linda McKinley, here they come. Still an 8-2 advantage, Bulldogs. It's Williams, they get it to Hughes, looking inside. They go to the big boy, battle, nothing there. He's being guarded closely by Busher. And Salinas seems very content in this 1-3-1 zone, Jason. Three goes up, it's no good, misses everything. Rebound, Nix. 
Rebound now is going to be Hoying as that shot is way off the mark. Hoying brings it back down the other direction. Fast paced ball game. Bilger wants the three. Gets it. You know, Swiner's got a lot of good looks from behind behind the three-point line tonight, and they finally they've knocked a couple down. They need to work that ball inside though to Butcher. Brooke Steinbrenner, the lucky recipient of that third three. This one by Bilger. And wanting a timeout is going to be head coach Aaron Owens of Lynn McKinley Panthers. We're going to take one with them, get a breather, listen to our sponsors. We'll be right back on your sports leader, WCSM. Free throw line. Misses a shot, but he gets fouled in the process, Jason. You know, he really does. There's, there's a lot of opportunity there for Salina. A couple putback shots that just couldn't get him to fall. Finally, they got a foul by Lynn McKinley. So Grant Lappin. He'll go to the line, try to capitalize that one off the back iron, no good. He'll get a second try at it. Lyndon McKinley going to answer with Montel Davis as Hughes checks out. Check that. Steve Blatt checks out. No, that was Hughes. He checks out. Here we go. That one's good. Second one, no good. Back the other way comes Lyndon McKinley. Here comes Williams. Uh, one to three is going to be Hugh, uh, Black. That one's no good. Rebound, long rebound goes to Fitzgerald for Lynn McKinley. Ball's going to be out of bounds. Official points, Salina's direction. As Fitzgerald just couldn't find the handle on it, Jason. You know he couldn't. Uh, Lynn McKinley, the, the players are kind of looking at each other. They're trying to get the chemistry going, uh, figuring out who's going to do what tonight. Salina's ball. Salina with a 12-2 advantage. Clock ready to tick under two minutes left in the first period. Lyndon McKinley goes to a 3-2 zone. It's going to be Busher driving baseline, left side, wants the five-footer, goes up strong, gets it. Busher on the board tonight. With nice, his first two. Nice strong move by Busher. Uh, put a move on his man, drove the lane. Uh, that's what's going to take to get him involved in the ball game tonight. 14-2. Lyndon McKinley now trying to operate a four-out, one-in offense, and it's going to be stolen away this time by Hoying. He's going to push on the fast break, takes the center of the court. Left side goes to Bader. It gets... Knocked out of bounds, but Salina will remain in control. Salina tried to pick up the tempo there, Steve, but tried to bring the ball down a little faster, get uh, Lyndon McKinley back on their heels. Salina seems like a better team when they're pushing the pace. They're a little more focused, trying to run that fast break. You know, they really do. Ball comes into Salina. It's going to be Bader. He'll try middle of the lane. Fumbles the ball around, tries to get it away. It's going to be taken away as the ball's loose on the floor, and nobody can get a hold of it this time. Finally, the Panthers do. Here comes Williams. The 5'7 point guard takes control. He gets a pick out top. Nothing there anyway. Bader works around it. Salina remains in a 1-3-1 one, one zone. One and the three is going to be Fitzgerald. Off the side of the iron. Bader will get the long rebound. He'll bring the ball up. Under a minute left to play in the first quarter. It's going to be Lappin. He wants the baseline jumper from 17, and he finds it. Lappin now with three points on the night. That was a good shot by Lappin. He got set up, squared his body to the basket, and let it rip. He looked comfortable on that shot, and he knew he was going to take it as soon as he got that ball. Panthers now going to work the ball around. They're going to drive right side. They get it off inside to Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald not making a good pass, and Fickert takes it away from him. Hoing's going to walk the ball up the court, and they might be content with the last shot of the quarter, Jason. Yep, Chris Ben just called in and said, guys, let's hang on to it. Let's try to see if we can get that last shot. So with a 16-2 advantage, the Bulldogs are try to, going to try to extend this lead. The Panthers will bring their zone out a little bit further to put pressure on Hoing. Works it back up top to Lappin. Left side to Bader. They find Hoing left side. He goes inside streaking. Can't get it up, up. Can't get it in. Ball goes out of bounds, and it's Hoing who knocked it out. Although he's arguing with it, the official is saying, no nope, Panther ball. You know, I think it was a good call by the ref. It was a great look. The Bulldogs set up a great offense. Hoing cuts to the basket from the far side, goes left side, tries to use that left hand on that layup, just couldn't get it off the backboard. You know, you, you, when, you go down, when you go in the lane with the Linda McKinley guys, there are some tall, tall guys. No question about it. As Linda McKinley brings that ball up, Salina slaps on their press and causes a turnover in the process. Linda McKinley going to turn the ball over with a travel, and they're going to get 2.7 seconds left, and it's going to be Fickard who wants it from three-point line. It's knocked out of bounds. His shot is blocked over on the baseline. Salina is going to get 0.5 seconds to score. The only thing they can do to score is get a tip in. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. They're going to almost have to shoot the ball from out of bounds to get that tip in. Ball goes up towards the backboard. There's nobody there, and the clock strikes zero. But nonetheless, 
it's with a 14 point advantage for the hometown slide of Bulldogs. Bulldogs lead 16 to two. We're gonna take a break, come back to the second quarter. We are your sports leader, WCSM. To learn the scores when they happen, visit twitter.com forward slash slime of six to see finals when they happen. Start of the second quarter, and Jason, Bulldog team looking pretty good right now. You know what, they've, they've, they found some cohesiveness. They let Ryan Hoyne get started early with a couple threes. Uh, that kind of built the confidence in their role, and they played their usual stifling defense, which is looking pretty good. Linda McKinley, on the other hand, they're trying to find their mojo. Salina gets the ball inbounds, and it's going to be a quick turnover as Mason Ross looks for a uh, streaker, but not that kind of a streaker, but somebody <laughs> come to the middle of the lane. He couldn't find either one, if you want to know the truth. Ball's turned over. McKinley goes back the other direction. They're going to pick up a foul. Number 24, uh, Montel Davis at the free throw line. Uh-oh, Chris Ben didn't like that. He calls a timeout. No, he sure did. And he wants a timeout to have to explain this one. What's he talking about over there? I'll tell you what, his face uh, says it all. He, was, he looked a little upset, and he's talking about how to throw the ball in. Uh, he's really riding the guys right now, Steve. Well, the one thing that he wants to do is make sure that this game doesn't, that, that they maintain this lead and they maintain the intensity. You don't want to come out in the first quarter and then history has shown us that the Bulldogs start to lighten up. You know, it just seems like we get comfortable with what we're doing. Uh, we, we, you know, we, we, we relax a little bit and then that's when we let somebody else come back into the game. And if, if, if they have a lot of power, you know, we can't catch them. We're not that real in, real in team. We talked about that in the pregame. So going to the line for the Panthers is going to be Montel Davis. He's going to get two. And this is the first set of free throw attempts for the Linda McKinley Panthers. The right-hander looks at it, eyes it up, lets it fly, and bounces it home. The first one good. That's only their third point of the night now, 16-3. Nice shot, nice smooth shot uh, by Montel there. They're gonna need to find a way to get some points on the board. Maybe this is the way to do it. Second one goes up, that one's gonna be short. Busher gets the rebound off to Hoing. Hoing pushes it, passes it up to Lappin. Lappin tries to penetrate, nowhere to go. Gets it out to Hoing. Now over baseline, Bilger wants another three. Likes it, loves it, buries it. Bilger with his second three of the night. Bilger had his arms up, he was wide open. Once he caught the ball, squared himself up, looked it down, and dropped it. Lane McCarter, the lucky recipient of that triple three. So we've given away four, we'll see if we give away more. Back the other direction, Panthers. They're going to work it around the horn. It's going to be Williams, the right side. Still outside the arc. Likes it from 21 and hits it. First three of the night for the Panthers. Kind of, kind of created his own shot there. Back the other way quickly. Bulldogs come back. It, get it inside to Lappin. Lappin goes right side in the middle of the lane. No good, but he's going to pick up the foul and go back to the free throw line. I like Lappin's aggressiveness. He got the ball there. He wanted to drive the lane. Ran into a, Lin a Lyndon McKinley player. Uh, got fouled and he's at the line. Good point, Bilger and Laffin both looking for one another on that fast break. Laffin now one of three from the free throw line. Is that one no good? Gets his second try. Right-hander sends it up, and that one's short on the rim. So one for four for the free throw line for Laffin. Back the other direction, Lynn McKinley trying to work quickly. They'll penetrate, get to the free throw line. It's going to be Fitzgerald, not there. Now with a new guy in the ball game, Thaddeus Clark goes up strong, backboard, no good, ball bounces around, rebound Hoing. Bilger gets the ball, he goes up strong, down the court, goes right hand and lamp and he count it. Bilger now with eight points on the evening. Nice play by Bilger, gets open in the uh, open court, they throw a lofty pass to him, he runs underneath it, catches it and lays it in for a layup, uncontested. So Linda McKinley still with a very deliberate offense as they get the ball down quickly, but then they work it around a lot as well. Fitzgerald tries the three. No good. That's a third one he's missed. It's off the iron. It'll tear him out of bounds. Bulldogs will control. You know, Linda McKinley's going to have to work the ball down low into the paint. Wow, we talked about Swine, and they're starting to have some success with that. If Linda McKinley, they've got some big guys out here, and if they don't work it into the paint, I don't think they can catch up shooting some of these outside shots. They need some bunny shots, Steve. So here comes Salina. 
They get the ball down right side on the sideline. Bilger thinks about it. Can't find an opening to get the shot off. Gets it back up top to Hoying. Finds Ross down low, left side. Three-footer, no good, but he's fouled. It'll be Ross to go to the free throw line. And what a great find by Hoying. Excellent pass. Ryan Hoying catches the ball, has his eyes up. Uh, Ross is down all by himself on the block. His defender wasn't even looking at him. Uh, great pass. I think Ross was maybe surprised on the pass. He wasn't expecting the ball to come to him. He got fouled in the plays at the line. And the Bulldogs struggling from the line tonight. That one goes off the side of the rim and bounces out. Ross going to get his second try of the night from the free throw strike. So with a 21-6 lead and just over six minutes to play in the first half, Ross sends the other one, and it's going to fall short as well. Bulldogs struggling. Rebound Laffin, though, to clean up the mess. Laffin capitalizes and gets another two. Five points for Grant Laffin. 23-6, Bulldog advantage. And they're just stretching this lead. Grant Laffin looks really well. He uh, looks real well. He's uh, into the game. Um, he's gelling with the offense. Got a nice, couple nice rebounds. Got to the free throw line. He's playing aggressive tonight. Williams sends a three. No good. Rebounded by Battle. That's no good either. Rebound this time by Busher. He'll get it. Send it off to Hoying. Hoying wants elbow left side. Gets it off the backboard and good. Nice shot. Hoying having a strong night. Nice shot, shot by Hoying. Gets to the elbow and lays one up. Unsupported. He's really looking for a shot tonight. He, he really is. I think maybe he got a coach, coach's talk by Ben. <laughs> Inside, Panthers will go, this time to Hicks. They want to get him started. He's their big guy. He goes up strong right hand, going to be fouled. He'll go to the line for two. You know, Battle's a big kid, and he just muscled his way into Busher. Uh, Busher wasn't going to have any of that. Had his hand straight up. Uh, Battle goes up, get, draws the foul, and he's at the line now. Busher picks up his first foul of the evening. Hicks fires the first one. And no good off the back iron. Check that, that's Battle who's at the line right now. Nick Battle. But he does capitalize on the second one. Gets his third point of the evening. Back the other way, cherry picking his Bilgo. They didn't see him. He sends it to the rim runner, who's Busher. He gets it right side. Lyndon McKinley fell asleep on that one. Lyndon McKinley sleeping. Uh, Bilgo's all by himself. Busher uh, attacks the basket. Easy pass, easy layup. Into the ball game now, David Bowers. He's running the point. Alongside him, Williams. Williams wants the three, takes it, hasn't made one yet, still hasn't made one yet. This one's going to be rebound battle. He goes up strong. They can't contend with him. He's strong, and he scores. He's a big kid, Steve, big kid. Right? We talked about him in the pregame, linebacker, all city, all league. 27-9. It's Mason Ross. Gets it outside the 20-point, 20 20-foot 20 arc and travels with it, turns the ball over. Unforced error by the Bulldogs. You know, really, really was, but it looked great. Uh, he, he thought about driving the lane, got the ball. Nobody in front of him. He just took a step before he put the ball on the floor. Williams gets it across the timeline. Now they'll go left side. They haven't seen a lot of action on the left side. They work the right side mostly. They'll get it back around, reverse it. This one goes to Clark. Clark gets it back up top. Williams, free throw line. Inside it goes to Thaddeus Fitzgerald. No good. Rebound Hoying. He's had a lot of rebounds tonight, Jason. He really has. He's, he's uh, really close. Ball comes down. It goes inside this time to Ross. Ross wow. spins. Nice Pretty move shot. and scores. Nice shot by Ross. Comes down with the ball uh, in the paint. Takes it right back up. A nice spin move. Looking good. Really aggressive play. Bulldogs really looking for one another. Looking for that pass. Looking to transition into that offense and get those easy shots. And we're going to get a kick down on the other side. An intentional by Bilger. So that'll give the McKinley Panthers... The ball out of bounds on the baseline. We're going to get some substitutions now as Fickert comes in, along with Bader. Taking the seat is going to be Ross and Lappin, who both deserve a break. No question about that. Yes, they both do. Uh, the, 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 their defense is really working with this battle kid. He's a big guy. And he's pushing him around, so they're going to have to catch some fresh bodies in the game to guard him a lot. Under four minutes to play in the first half. 29-9 advantage for the Bulldogs. Looking for the long three is going to be Bowers. Doesn't think about it, but he passes it off. It's going to be kicked once again by the Bulldogs. Salina will force McKinley to take the ball sideline. Coach Owens off the off the bench for Lyndon McKinley, and he is really on his players now. He, he wants some uh, he wants some points. He wants to get back in this game. So Williams now over to Bowers. Bowers back to Williams. Williams thinks about the three, and yet another kick. So this Bulldog defense playing very quickly on the defensive end, and they are moving their feet, no question about it. You know, it's what we're used to seeing that aggressive defense, the stifling, suffocating defense for the Salina Bulldogs. 
Ball's inbound. Left side, Williams. They'll reverse it. Williams takes it to the free throw line. Launches it. Off the backboard. No good. Fitzgerald rebound. No good. It's going to be battle rebound. No good. Fitzgerald rebound. Now finally capitalized. Two points for Fitzgerald as the Bulldog rebounders just couldn't get to the ball. Back the other direction comes Bader. Left side. Going to be fouled as he drives but misses. You know this last play with Linda McKinley. A uh, lot, of, lot of rebounds. They're not boxing out. Swine is not boxing out. Uh, Lyndon McKinley had a lot of rebounds, a lot of putbacks. They just couldn't make it fall. And finally, they, get, they did get it to fall with the battle. So going to the line for two. It's going to be the junior Bader. Right-hander sends it. And the free throws just aren't falling tonight, JB. You know, they're really not. They're one from seven, right? One of seven right now from the free throw line. And, uh, you know, I'm looking at Chris Ben, and he's got that look again. Like, he wants to talk to these guys. These free throws, uh, they have to be automatic. Well, and maybe they aren't hurting him in this game right now as he capitalizes on the second one, hits it for his first point of the night. But when you get into WBL play, those wins and losses are accumulated at the free throw line so often. So here comes Williams. No, it's checked that. It's going to be Powers who wants it from 22. No good. Rebound goes into the hands of Bader. Gets it to Hoing. Hoing right side to Bilger. Wants to get it inside to Busher. Busher spins. Looks to work. It's a, gets it to a flashing Bilger. Gets it blocked as he drives to the right side. Back the other way comes the Panthers. Bowers, he's going to penetrate. He wants a three. He backs up right atop the circle. No good. Rebound Bilger. He'll push the pace down the other end. Doesn't have the numbers, but passes it off to Bilger. And he gets that ball slapped out of bounds, but not before he's fouled on the floor. You know, and Slyon's trying to pick up that tempo again. Uh, fast pace, basketball, get the rebound, get it up the floor. Steve, there's just maybe a pass or two, and they're underneath Linda McKinley's basket again. Well, here's what is kind of confusing if you're looking at it from a Linda McKinley standpoint. They want to go, and, and they get inbound the ball, and Ficker goes ahead and scores on that inbounds from seven as he banks it home. Nice shot. We'll get to my point here in a rem little bit. Remind me. Okay. Back the other direction, the Panthers. Salina remains in a 1-3-1 defense. 2.20 left in the first half. Bulldogs, 32-11 lead. And wanting a timeout is going to be Lyndon McKinley coach Aaron Owens. And this is a great opportunity to bring up my point. JB, they've got five points from their big guy, Nick Battle, who's just really working hard on the inside. He's their go-to guy. He's their linebacker on their football team. He's their star. At the same time, I'm watching this offense go to work, and they've taken seven three-pointers and only made three. They're not working it inside to that big guy. Maybe that's what Coach Owens wants to talk about right now. You know, they really are. The battle has got to get involved with this game. They've got to feed the ball through him, and he's going to, you know, be the catalyst of this offense getting going. I will, I will give credit to the Bulldogs. Every time this battle has set up in the paint, whether moving left to right or back and forth, these guys have collapsed on them, and they're, and they're pushing on them. They're pushing them out of the paint. They don't want them to get the ball. They don't want them to get a look. Uh, they've had a couple subs. Salina's so using a lot of their big guys to, to uh, push on battle. And he's obviously the biggest guy on the floor tonight, Steve. Uh, it's going to take the whole Salina, uh, our, our big guys, to, to get battle out of the paint. Uh, no question about that. And when they do get him, you've got Busher down low in that 1-3-1, one, one, and then they're also collapsing on him from from top so they're kind of they're pinching him is what they're doing but he's still getting some good rebounds in there and uh maybe coach owens we're going to see a little bit different look offensively for the panthers as they get ready to take the ball out of bounds with 217 left in the first half and being down 32 to 11. you know as the timeout concluded coach owens followed his men on the floor and was still coaching them giving them direction if they, if they took the floor i like his coaching style he's right with them and he's uh he's a cheerleader for him no question about it and he gets on them when they need to he's an intimidating presence and i like that the coach <laughs> no question about it balls inbound no working around try to reverse it they get it over to reed reed gets it inside the battle that's just what they were talking about going up strong working against ficker he'll get the foul and now go to the free throw line you know battle once he gets that ball he does have good handling skills he took three or four dribbles drove himself into the lane took a nice shot got fouled but he you know he's working in for that that quick layup that quick two points and he's a big body you're not going to push him around in there there's no question about it i don't think anybody's going to push him around tonight that one he sends and gets the advantage on that one so first free throw is good Battle now with six points. Splat, three free throw shot goes in. That's not much arc <laughs> on those shots, is it? But nonetheless, he capitalizes. It wasn't pretty, but it was effective. Bicker gets the ball inside, tries to go back door. 
off the backboard, no good, doesn't go in, very frustrated with himself right now, and in the process, there's going to be a foul. You know, great play, flashed into the lane, got the ball on a great pass, was all alone, uncontested, missed the, missed the layup. Busher picks up his second of the night, trying to get to that rebound. Lyndon McKinley, with under two minutes to play, trying to find some answers offensively. Working against that 1-3-1 one, one zone. They get it up top to the free throw line. Sending it, it's gonna be black, misses. Back the other direction. If they get it down low to Busher, Busher goes up strong with the right hand inside the paint. Five footer, good. Nice play by Busher. Got himself open, landed in the paint, turned around. Quick, easy, two points. Bowers, now to Reed. Reed penetrates, gets it inside the battle. He's working strong. Fickert blocks his shot. Rebound goes to Fitzgerald. Check that, that's gonna be black and the ball is going to go out of bounds. But it looks like officials are going to say that the Panthers were the last one to touch that. So with a minute 15, back come the Bulldogs. Bilger wants it. Drives, sends it off the other side. Cross court to Bader. Gets it a little bit too high for the 5'8 wide receiver, and it goes out of bounds. Nice. Turnover dogs. Nice look. Trying to uh, create a cross court pass. Just didn't have the uh, right height. Too, high, too much height on the ball. Too much air underneath the ball. He touched it, but it went out of bounds. He thought he was throwing it to Fickert. <laughs> Didn't remember he was throwing it to Bader. Yeah, yes, sir. So now under a minute, ticks. Left in the first left in the first half. We've got a foul down low away from the ball. It's Bader's working against Battle, and that's a mismatch. That is a huge mismatch, and they knew it. Lyndon McKinley was trying to get the ball into Battle. Bader didn't have a choice. He had to foul him. He, he, he gives up at least three or four inches, and I'm sure it's probably closer to 50 pounds of pure muscle. That battle out, out, uh, outweighs Bader. He's a, this battle guy's a big kid. Folks. You knew something was wrong when Battle got a big smile on his face <laughs> down there in the post. And he's calling for the ball. That's yeah. right. <laughs> so checking out is going to be Busher and Fickert. Back in the ball game is Laffin and Ross. Taking the ball out of bounds is going to be the Panthers. They get it inbounds. They're going to set up the offense. Back up top to Williams. Bulldogs remain in the 1-3-1 zone. They look at the three, and as they do, he drives. It's going to be Reed who gets called for the travel as he tries to go penetrate the key. George Reed had a great look at the ball, got the ball, and just took off before he put the ball on the floor. Another turnover by Lyndon McKinley. So Bilger with it, back up top to Hoing. Hoing going to try to settle his offense and get him set, get everybody in position, working against Reed, who they come out in a man-to-man -man defense. Jason back door now goes to Bilger. It's going to be a foul as Bilger goes to the, goes to the floor, looking right side in battle. We'll get the harm on that one. It's going to be Bilger going to go to the line, trying to get his ninth and tenth point of the night. I'll tell you what, Battle, Battle let him have it. He drove the lane, and Battle got up with him and said, you know, not, not on my watch, sir. No thank you. So the senior sends it. No good. And the Bulldogs just not doing it from the free throw line. That went off the back iron. You know, that's funny, Steve, because we, we, have, some, we have three of the best uh, free throw shooting percentages in the Grand Lake area. And uh, tonight... We're not, we don't have it. Uh, don't that was no good either, and probably the only one not finding it funny is Coach Ben. He didn't look happy about that at all. Back the other direction. Bulldogs put some pressure on half court. Extend that defense. Driving to the lane is going to be Black. Black goes right hand. He's going to get fouled. Ball does not go in. But he'll go to the line. Linda McKinley spread it out a little bit now, Steve. They've, uh, they've tried to spread it out so they can work. Uh, they, they can work Nick Battle down low. Uh, they've got him going back and forth, block to block. They've got some guys out in the three-point uh, perimeter trying to spread the ball around. So Steve Black puts his first three thro free throw up and does get it to fall. His first point of the night. He'll get a second try here with just under 20 seconds to play in the first half. And he buries it. So 34-15, dogs. Hoying gets the ball. He's going to walk it up past the timeline. Looking for that last and final shot. Panthers, man-to-man. -man. Bulldogs spread out the offense, trying to get in the lane for Hoing. Hoing drives left side, no good, but he's going to pick up the foul as he does. We'll see if it's on the floor or on the shot. They'll it's call it... They will call it on the floor, but it is a one-and-one one because they are in the bonus. Yes, they are. Ryan Hoing, uh, nice, nice plays at the top here. He has the ball. Check that. They called it on the shot. He's going to give him two. First one goes up and misses. I, I am sure Coach Ben will be talking about the free throw. Might be a topic of conversation, do you think? Absolutely. It will be the first and foremost when I get to the locker room. Second one goes up and he hits this, hits this one. 
So at least they end on a strong note there as Hoeing picks up his ninth point. Bulldogs put pressure on, they get the ball back. They get it off to Bilger, under five seconds. He sends it from 17, good. Nice shot by Bilger. So the Bulldogs get a steal just before the end of the half and extend that lead, 37 to 15. And the only thing we can talk about at halftime is the free throws, but nonetheless, it's a commanding lead for this line of Bulldogs. We're gonna put some numbers together and let you hear from our sponsors who we very much appreciate. We'll be right back on your sports leader, WCSM. Do you want to know scores when they happen? Visit twitter.com forward slash slime of six to see finals when they happen. So many unfilled jobs, so many applicants lacking skills. Manufacturing jobs boom is for real. Facts are facts. Ohio has jobs and they're going unfilled. At TriStar Career Compact, our students are learning the necessary skills for these jobs. TriStar offers classes in precision machining, biomedical and electronics, and engineering, among others, making our students job ready for the workforce upon graduation. TriStar is helping fill the skilled labor positions available in our own backyard. This is a community gets involved that would like to know the facts. Star Career Compact. Education with community impact. Connect with us online by becoming a fan of Channel 6 on Facebook. Stay updated with programming information as well as Salina football and basketball scores. You'll receive behind the scenes photos and exclusive videos sent straight to your newsfeed. Show your support today and like Channel 6 on Facebook at facebook.com slash Salina6. Steve Harris, Jason Black back here at the Salina Fieldhouse getting ready for the start of the third quarter. The Bulldogs lead 37-15 and it's going to be Linda McKinley who will have the ball out of bounds right next to my partner. So Jason... What does Salina talk about at halftime other than the free throws as we get started? Do not come out flat. Come out with the intensity that you started the game with, and it looks like they have. They are doubling down on defense. Good nice point. Steal. Just as we do that, Matt Busher gets the turnover, goes back the other way, and here comes, it's going to be Lynn McKinley, steals the ball back as well. They go and give the ball to Battle. Battle goes right side, no good. Get it back down the court. Salina rebounds to Bader. Go right inside to Busher. He wheels and deals. Left hand. Good. So Salina. Working quickly to try to get on the board and start quick in this second half. JB. Busher is looking really good. They're, they're fast paced tempo. Slime is not going to come out flat, obviously, and uh, get Busher right in the game. Putting that pressure on defensively, still in a 1 3 run zone, is the Slime of Bulldogs trying to force that turnover. Driving the baseline is going to be Fitzgerald off the back iron. Rebound Hoing. Hoing will keep it. He'll bring it up, get across the timeline. Looking inside to Ross, not there. Left side now to Bilger. Now Hoyne gets it back for the three-pointer. Tries to start the way he started the first quarter, can't do it. Ross rebounds though and gets it in. 
Mason Ross, nice rebound, had good position on his guy, grabbed it, quick bunny shot, down up for two. 41-15, the Bulldogs just starting to use their muscle and push this Linda McKinley team around. Linda McKinley doesn't have a whole lot of answers offensively. Nowhere really to go except for battle inside. They do get it into him now, working against Busher and backing him down. Battle's going to get the charge call. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, you know, Battle's a big guy. We've been talking about it all night. Put his, put his shoulder really down into Busher and knocked him over. Good call by the referee. And Battle's one of those guys, he's kind of got this, uh, he's, he's just got a, He's not as, he's not the tallest guy on the floor, but he's a big body, just hard to move around, and you're going to get knocked down if he runs into you. Bader sends the three, no good. Rebound Bilger on the far side, good. 43-15. Think about battle, he is solid muscle, solid muscle. Williams will work the ball across the timeline, no pressure by the Bulldogs. They remain back in their 1-3-1. One, one. Battle goes, drives right in between. He doesn't drive in between anybody. He goes right at him, and he'll pick up the foul and go to the line. Battle this time had uh, had Busher in his sight. Took, put the ball on the floor, drove him home. Busher took a couple steps back. Uh, Battle went up for the shot. Busher followed him. He's at the line. He makes Busher look like the skinny kid out there. You know that, right? <laughs> yes, he does. So the first one goes up, and it's no good. McKinley will come in with some substitutions as does the Bulldogs. Busher will come out and Fickert will come in as Battle gets a try at the second one. Battle with seven points, make it eight. Gets that one to go. First points in the second half for the Panthers. Salina down to the baseline to Hoing, looking inside to Ross, not there, Ross, or Hoing's gonna bring it back up and set it up between the circles, over to Thicker, back to Hoing. Salina's gonna have to try to work that ball in the center again, now they're setting back up, up top. Panthers gonna be content with the zone defense, they get it up top to Thicker at the base, at the free throw line, over to, over to Bader, baseline, back up top to Hoing. Salina, looks like they're trying to pull this defense out, JB. They really are. There they go. There's somebody cutting to the basket. It's Hoing. Two points. Hoing flashes right side. Ross finds him, hits him. Slana looks a little bit better when they do that motion offense. When they try to stand around and pass the ball around, it doesn't work so well. And they have people cutting to the basket. That's more their style of basketball. Salina does a lot better. You're absolutely right. When they're getting movement away from the ball, and this offense has it going on tonight, no question. Now with five minutes left in the third quarter and a 45-16 lead. Salina, defense against the Panthers. Panthers send it from the sideline, 19-9, no good. Three-pointer off the mark, rebound. This one goes to Davis. He goes up strong, no good. Rebound again, Panthers, blocked by Fickert. Fickert's gonna get called for the foul, and Fickert didn't like it, but I think they got him with the body. A lot of second opportunities there for Linda McKinley. They just can't seem to find the bottom of the basket. Uh, they're not, the Bulldogs are not blocking them out, bo uh, boxing them out, and Lennon McKinley's getting opportunity after opportunity on a putback layup. And even though they're not capitalizing on those opportunities, it's frustrated Coach Ben enough where he wants to get a timeout right now and talk about that very thing. You know, I, I think he's definitely going to talk about the boxing out. I mean, they, 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 they maneuver inside, battle, we've talked about him. He goes in, has the big body, and just kind of sets up. They take an outside shot, it's rebound. Uh, also with Davis, he's down low, um, and they both get two or three looks before they either get fouled or the basket goes in. Coach and Ben doesn't like that at all. Well, and I like this as a teaching moment. Even though you're a lead, and even in the lead, and even though you have an eight to one advantage in the third quarter, just kicking it off, Coach Ben wants to use this as a teaching moment because you're not gonna have this kind of advantage in the WBL. That's exactly right. This is a fundamental uh, lesson right here about boxing out, getting your man on your back, Thing between your man and the basket when that ball comes down it should be an easy rebound for the bulldogs let's get back to the fundamentals of boxing our man out well That's and rebounding ball. just really has a whole lot to do with yeah boxing out but which team's working harder and right now on the offensive boards defensive boards it's the panthers even though the score doesn't show it exactly exactly they're in the right position they've got their man on their back uh, a lot of easy offensive rebounds they just haven't had the ball fall their way so back to the free throw line and it's going to be thaddeus clark who drives it and he'll get it. So his first point of the night, he'll get a second try at it. 
First one, the second one goes up and it rims out. Rebound Ficker. He's just going to bring it across himself. Gets it down to Bader. Bader looks inside to Ross and it's stolen as he tries to go inside. Turnover Bulldogs. Here come the Panthers. The Bulldogs transition quickly on defense and they force the Panthers to pull out that offense and reset. Salina brings out their 1-3-1 zone, extends it. Bader putting pressure on the ball. Williams drives, right elbow. Gets it off and it is good. So Williams, his fifth point of the evening. Looks like the Panthers want to pick up the pace a little bit too. Uh, Salina's defense makes everything slow down a little bit. Bilger wants the three from the arc on the far side, no good. Fickert goes up for it, ball caroms away. It's gonna be a jump ball and it's gonna be Salina who will control. Salina's playing good defense, they're moving, or I'm sorry, my bad, a good offense. They're moving the ball back and forth. A lot of cross court passing. They're trying to find an open man for an easy shot. Hoying gets the ball and bounds to Ross right in the middle of the key, he sends it. No, it's no good, but he's gonna to go to the free throw line. Try to get it, get two more point advantage here. Nice inbound play, Ross had a quick move stepped into the lane, got the ball on a high on a high pass. Uh, quick bunny shot, obviously got fouled, and he's at the line. Looks like Linda McKinley just lost where Ross was. Ross gets the free throw up and gets it to go. That's going to make Coach Ben happy. <laughs> it has to make Coach Ben happy. <laughs> the uh, second one's on its way, and he nailed that also. Two for two from the line, second half. 47-19, four minutes left to play in the third period. Bulldogs with a commanding lead. They sit back in the 1-3-1 zone. Force Linda McKinley to force the action. It's going to be Williams. He'll try to penetrate left side. They get it back outside. They'll reset. There's just nowhere to go with it. They're working a high-low offense, and they just this Salina defense is just just uh, taking their breath away and to get it inside the battle. Battle tries to go right side. Not a good shot. It's way off the mark. Bulldogs rebound. It's going to be Ross. Here comes Hoying. Gets it inside them. Thicker, thicker goes up right side. Good. Nice passing, nice movement of the ball, uh, drives the lane, draws the defense towards him, nice quick bounce pass. Well, the bounce pass actually went to Bader. Bader sent it across to Fickert. Fickert capitalizes on that. The other direction. Here comes Williams. And I just don't know if this Panther offense understands how much they're down. They're they got to make something go here. They try to drive right side, and they're going to get called for the travel. That's going to be Thaddeus Clark who gets called for that and they're just not doing a whole lot right right now. You know, they're trying to get Battle involved in the game, and I tell you, he's in a full-blown sweat. He's, he's got two guys that collapse on him at all time, whether it's on the left block or the right block. Salina's really taking Battle out of the game. Laughing back in the ball game. Now hands it off to Hoying. Hoying gets it between the circles. Sets up the offense. He's guarded closely by Fitzgerald. Ross looks back door, nothing there. Now goes to Laffin. Ross checks out on the sideline. Baseline. Gets it into Fickert. Fickert out to Laffin. Back into Fickert. Gets it to a flashing Hoying. Hoying wants it from eight. No good. Fickert rebounds. Right side. Goes up strong and gets it to fall and gets the foul. I'll tell you what. Nice hustle by Fickert. Gets over there. Gets the rebound. Gets back down on the floor. Puts the ball up. Gets fouled. The ball goes. Good job for him. Nice, nice hustle. Coach Ben's got to really like it when those big guys remain active inside and that ball goes up and they get themselves into position to where the ball is going to come off the rim most likely. That's exactly what Eric Fickert did. You know, and Fickert does not have an easy job. He's being played by Mr. Battle and he's getting pushed around, uh, challenged for every rebound. And that one is no good. Couldn't make the honest three work. So it remains 51-19. Two and a half left in the third period. High-low offense go the Panthers. Just nowhere to go inside. Battle's just getting surrounded by Ross and Fickert and getting help from Laffin up top. They do get it into Battle now and he works against all three of them and scores. Triple team drives the ball easy layup. He makes it look so easy. He's just so strong. Yes he is. Ross now to Hoying. Baseline. Bilger wants the three. Takes it. Short. Rebound Panthers. Under two to play in the third. Williams trots it across the timeline. Left side, wanting it as Clark drives up, no good. Rebound, Fickert, he controls. Getting pressure from the from Battle, and Battle's going to foul him as a result. So those rebounds go into Salina, but the Panthers are contesting all of them. They know they need to get that ball back. You know, and I saw that with Battle. I think he, that was a little frustration foul. The ball was, you know, obviously Salina had control of the ball, and he took a swing at it, uh, got body instead of the ball. He's walking down the court, and he's a little frustrated. You can see that on his face, Steve. 30-point lead for Salina, 51-21. It's going to be thicker to take it out of bounds 
in the enemy territory. Hoying going to walk the ball across half court. Getting everybody in place. Laughing gets up top. He'll get the ball. Gets it to the free throw line to Fickert. Now to a flashing beta. Right side goes up. No good. He'll go to the free throw line. Bulldogs working the ball and really working away from the ball. You know, and they're not just playing on the left side of the floor or the right side of the floor. Like you said, they're playing away from the ball. The ball went to the left side of the floor, back to the right, back to the left. Then Bader cuts. They give him the ball. Uh, nice work without the ball. Nice layup. Just didn't go down. And the free throw doesn't go down as well. But, JB, it, I think this is, let's face it, Linda McKinley is not a good team. There's no question about it. But this is a great confidence builder for the Salina Bulldogs and a great way to learn and kind of refocus what they need to do and what they do well. You know, they need to get back, like you said, refocus on the fundamentals, boxing out, free throws, uh, moving the ball, moving without the ball. Uh, Salina's looking a lot better tonight. No question about it. Bader hits the second free throw. So now with two points on the evening, extending the lead to 52 to 21. McKinley trying to find answers for this 1-3-1 zone. The answer is maybe a three, and yes, burying it is going to be David Bowers. 52-24, back the other direction. Bulldogs look inside to Fickert. Fickert makes a nice move, gets the ball in the short corner. Back out to Laffin. Up top to Bader. Bader looks inside to Busher. He wants it. Bader can get it to him on a bounce pass, but if it carries away, Hoying picks it up. Fickert flashes across, and big kicking it up is Laffin. Laffin over the left side to Bader. Bader inside to Fickert. Now for the three is Hoying, and he hits it. Third three-pointer of the night for Ryan Hoying. Nice ball moving by the Bulldogs, left and right, back and forth. Hoying sets up. They find him. He, he clutches the ball and knocks it down. Nice three-point by Ryan Hoying. And congratulations to Evelyn Hooks, who will get her McDonald's triple try reward. Now back the other direction, the Panthers. Another three-pointer from David Bowers. That's his second in a row. Sure is, so six points for the young man. Clock ticks down, under 20 seconds to play in the third. The Bulldogs want to get a good shot. Looking inside to Bush, who's working hard on the post. Bickert, top of the key, try to get it to him. Nope, they'll get it to Hoying up top. He'll reset, 10 seconds to play in the third quarter. Nice, He's nice. gonna work one-on-one, -on -one. right side, drives. He's gonna get fouled as he goes up for the layup. Not liking it, though, is going to be Steve Black, I think. We'll get the number on that and make sure, yes, it's going to be Steve Black who picks up his second foul. Hoying going to go to the line for two. Nice nice drive by Hoying. Uh, when he got into the lane, was triple teamed. I didn't think there was anywhere to go. Obviously, they got him on the arm. He gets to the charity strike. So that one is good. Hoying makes both of them. And now with 14 points. Bulldogs put full court pressure on with five seconds left. They cut through it to the Panthers. They get a shot off from the free throw line. Off the back iron, no good. Clock ticks down and there's the buzzer. The Salina Bulldogs with a 56 to 27 lead. And liking the way things are looking is Coach Ben as he goes into the first quarter, fourth quarter with a lead, which is something he hasn't had in quite a while. We're gonna take a break. We'll be right back to talk more Salina basketball and bring you the fourth on your sports leader, WCSM. I think it's, it's, it's uh, appropriate for the Bulldogs. They need to find out who they are. They need their identity. They need some of their key players to find out what their range is, where their shot is. Uh, let's get back to the fundamentals, and let's put some points up, feel good at the end of the night. So the start of the fourth, Panthers will get the ball. Looking inside, they'll look far side. It goes to Reed. Reed goes up. No good. Knocks out of bounds, and it actually falls out of bounds. It's going to be off Panthers. Salina will get the ball on the turnover. Quickly down the court, Bilger passes it to Bader. Bilger operating the point. Bader looking inside to Busher. Busher drives left, goes up strong, not going to get the shot to fall, but he's going to get to go to the free throw line and try to make this an additional two-point game. Nice pass by Bader. He, he let it cook a little bit. He let Busher get open. Nice bounce pass into the post. That is the best pass into the post. Nice bounce pass. Uh, goes up, gets triple team, gets hit on the arm. He's at the charity strike. Those two. big boys love those bounce passes inside, <laughs> don't they? They sure do, Steve. Busher gets the first one to go. So Busher now with nine points, looking for his tenth, and gets it. You know, I got to tell you, Steve, Coach Ben must have talked to these guys about free throws. They've come out in the second half, uh, seven of nine in the second half from the free throw line. 
Lynn McKinley's offense line is forcing them way outside and trying to work it inside and get it in now. They just can't do it or haven't been able to. Now the ball over to Powers. Powers has hit his last two, three attempts. They're not letting him take any shots at this point. He drives, penetrates the middle of the zone, gets it off. This one goes to Black. Black goes up strong, no good. Rebound Lappin. Ball's almost turned over, but Bilger will control it and keep it. So here they come. Gets it to Fickert. Fickert at the top of the arc. Back to Bilger. Over to Laffin, left side. Now to Fickert, working at the top of the free throw line. That high-low offense against that zone. Trying to tie him up is Linda McKinley. Bader flashes, but as he goes to the lane, he gets tied up and he gets called for a travel as a result. Nice thinking by Bader. He, he leaves his man, cuts the lane, uh, catches the ball. Uh, wasn't a, I wouldn't say it was the best pass. Uh, and he fumbled with it a little bit, got called for the travel. So Lynn McKinley is driving baseline now. It's going to be Fitzgerald. Busher goes to the floor, no call, and probably a very good no call. Fitzgerald gets his own rebound, puts it back in, and good. Again, second chance opportunity for Lynn McKinley. I'm going to give Busher credit. He was on the floor on that one. Busher gets it sideline, or baseline, check that. Tries to drive. He's going to get going to get called as Fitzgerald as he gets a blocking foul as Busher tries to head to the head to the rack. It's going to be out of bounds, Salina. I like the aggressiveness of Salina. They come out in the fourth, third, and fourth quarter. They're looking for their shot, looking for the ball, driving the lane. That was the eighth team foul for Lyndon McKinley, so that'll send Busher to the line for a one and one with a 58 to 29 lead at the 621 mark left in the ball game. The senior puts it up there, and it's good. Again, Salina's looking much better from the free throw line in the second half. No question about that. Checking in is Shavoni. Taking a seat is going to be Hoying. Shavoni getting some action lately. He was a good, very good ball handler. Makes good decisions with the ball. Second one's off the mark for Busher. Back come the Panthers. I'm a big fan of Shavoni. I like his hustle and I like his play. He's a good kid, too. He's helped out with some of the youth basketball programs as well as a lot of these Salina Bulldog uh, varsity players and uh, just uh, likes being around the young kids and just, just a good kid all around. Yeah, definitely has a future here in Salina. Panthers just trying to find some kind of offense, trying to find some scoring. Battle out of the ball game now. Rebound. This one's going to go to Clark. Clark rebounds. He's going to fall out of bounds with the ball. So even when they work so hard, they just can't seem to find their footing, JB. I will say this, Salina has turned up the heat on defense. I mean, they are on top of that ball. I'm not talking to one guy. There's two guys, triple team. Battle has finally found the frustration, and he's on the bench now. But Salina's defense is uh, in full force tonight, firing on all cylinders. Bilger operating the point over to Schiavone. Busher pops out behind the arc, baseline. Back up top. Top of the key goes to Fickert. Fickert double teamed and trying to find his way. He's going to get fouled on a grab by Thaddeus Clark. Ficker to go to the line for his one and one. Looks like Lyndon McKinley's trying to turn up their defense too. They had, they had him triple teamed at, the, at almost uh, top of the free throw line, top of the key. Um, they're on him, they, they want to turn it up also. Off the back of the iron, rebound. This one goes to Fitzgerald. Panthers look to push the pace, left side, drives left side. It's going to have a blocking foul. This one's going to be in Shavoni. Salina faithful don't like it, but I think it was a good call. I'm going to disagree with you here, Steve. I thought his feet, his feet were set, and um, I like Shavoni. I think he, he, you know, obviously he's, he's uh, outsized there, and he takes the charge and didn't get the call. No worries. You're allowed to be wrong, partner. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me of that also. <laughs> <laughs> Nonetheless, one and one goes up. No good. Rims out. And I think the, the official blows it dead, and it really should have been maybe a two-shot foul. Some of the officials are talking right now, so they're trying to figure this one out. Was this a one-and-one one or a two-shot foul? I think there's some confusion between the stripes. What do you think, Steve? What would you have called that, a two-shot foul? It was absolutely a two-shot foul. Know. I thought so, too. There we go. We agree there tonight. So the officials still trying to get together, and... Uh, having a little conference here about half-court, mid-court. Well, I like what they're doing, and I'm going to defend the officials. Hey, there's mistakes that are made, but when there are, let's get together, let's talk about it, and let's get the foul, let's get the call correctly. And what they did is they decided that it was a one-on-one. -on -one. Salina had the rebound when the whistle blew. 
So it's going to be Salinas ball at the 522 mark in the fourth period, leading 59-31. And so they are going to have a spot situation as they inbound the ball with no pressure. Bilger, the recipient, he'll bring it across the timeline. Vicker goes right to the top of the key, gets it, looks to wheel and deal, laughing, driving to the hole, gets it to a flashing Fickert again, turnover as he tries to get that pass through, couldn't do it. Panthers back the other direction, now going to get called with a traveling foul, and, and that's the third traveling call by George Reed as he has faked the shot and tried to drive the lane, and he's just getting those wheels turning like Fred Flintstone trying to move that car. And he's just not getting the ball down in time. I'll tell you what, George Reed's a very quick player. I've watched him a couple couple times tonight, and he has got tremendous foot speed. Too quick. Way too quick. You guys are able to ball when you're, when you're moving those feet, though. Too. Inside the figure, it goes. Top of the key. Flashing is laughing. Laughing gets the right-handed lab. Good. Nice passing by Schleiner again. Back and forth passing left to right. Kind of lulling Lyndon McKinley to sleep. Laughing now with seven points on the evening. Lynn McKinley working a four out, one in offense. The big guy inside is Fitzgerald, but they can't find him anywhere and they're gonna have a kick out of bounds as Salina turns up that defense, tries to keep that ball from penetrating inside that key. Inbound we go, 4.30 left to play in the ball game. Skip pass over to Reed. Reed, side baseline over to Clark. Good ball move Davis, by check McKinley. that. Back up to Reed. Reed now to Black. Black thinks about trying to take the shot, but he's guarded closely by Shavoni. It's going to be, it's going to be Reed who will take the three from the side baseline. No good. Rebound. Bilger. Long pass down to Shavoni. Shavoni gets it knocked away, but not before he's fouled. Going up for that shot. Nice hustle by Shavoni. I'm going to give him, give him what he deserves here. Ran full court, caught the ball on the left block. Uh, Linda McKinley collapsed on him. He let a first one or two defenders go by. On the third defender, they caught him on the arm. He's at the free throw line. 30-point lead for Salina, 61-31 at just over four minutes to play in the ball game. Shavoni looking to extend that, and he does not. I was really relying on him to make that. It would have made the comment uh, sound a whole lot better. <laughs> and he does versus Andy does not. Well, I appreciate his hustle. So he gets his second attempt. Shavoni looking for his first point, and he gets it that time. Bobby Matra now into the ball game. Along with Fickert, Shavoni, Bilger, and Lappin. Under four minutes now. Panthers, baseline, three-pointer, no good. Fitzgerald runs it down. Thinks about the three, but Fickert's on him tight. Back up top, now over to Clark on the baseline. They are not letting Lyndon McKinley breathe at whatsoever. Bowers takes the three and he gets it. That's his third one of the evening. He's three for three from the three-point line. Looking inside, they go to Matraw. Matraw gets it to a flashing Ficker. Ficker goes up strong with it. It wasn't a pretty shot, but went in. in. What it a, went in. What a shot. That was a left hand by, by Ficker, who is a right-handed ball player, I believe. Looking at that left-handed shot, he has to be a right-handed ball player. Absolutely. It was, it was not pretty, but it was effective. Uh, nothing but the bottom of the net on that shot. That's sure. exactly right. 64-34, <laughs> 30-point lead for the Bulldogs. 3-18 left to play in the ballgame, and Grant Laffin is fouled, and he'll go to the line for two. It was on the floor, but double bonuses now for the Bulldogs. George Reed took the ball up for uh, Linda McKinley, uh, drove down, took a nice shot, just came up frustrated that he missed, and he fouled Followed Laffin. Laffin gets that first one to go. Laffin having a strong night. Eight points for him. So lots of substitutes now for the Bulldogs. As Flouty checks in, Cole Flouty, Eric Mater checks in as well. Second one off the mark for Laffin. Rebound to the Panthers. Here they come. 65-34. Bulldogs extend the man-to-man -man defense. Still putting a lot of pressure on. Well, they're playing strong defense all the way out of half court. Ke Kayvon Edwards for the Panthers getting some playing time right now. Checking into the game is Corey Hughes. He got the start. Ball goes out of bounds, and it is going to be Salinas' ball. 
So also checking into the game. It's going to be Sean Cook. Sean Cook gets it inside. It, actually, it's going to be Shavoni gets it inside to Matraw. Matraw, no good. Rebound run down by Kirk. Shavoni looks inside to Matraw again. Gets it to Flouty. Flouty wants it from the elbow. It's blocked. Controlled by the Panthers. They'll come down. They think they have numbers, but they dribble the ball out of bounds. Unforced turnover. And that's kind of been the story of the night for the Lyndon McKinley Panthers, JB. You know, too much speed. Corey Hughes took the ball, uh, went, went to take off, just got going too fast, couldn't get the ball in himself under control, dribbled it right out of bounds. Inbound come the Bulldogs. Mater gets it across to Flowdy. Mater between the circles. Now left side. Kurt. From the free throw line, it's going to be DeLong who's checked into the ball game. Nice look at the basket. Nice shot. Just didn't go. Absolutely. Can't be upset about that. That was a great look at the basket. Rebound Panthers. Kick it out for the three. No. Drives it in. Wants it from left elbow. No good. Great check out by Bobby Matraw. Runs down the rebound. He had his man checked out out of bounds, JB. He put his body on him. Yeah. Bulldogs get him. it inside to Matraw. Matraw wants to turn around from 15. Can't get it to fall. Rebound's going to go to the Panthers. Under two minutes to play in the ball game. Salina 65, Panthers 34. Panthers look inside, nothing there. They want baseline, they get it to Hughes. Hughes thinks about it, tries to work against DeLong, nothing there. Driving right into the middle of the key, losing the handle on it is gonna be Edwards. He gets a shot off, and we've got a foul on the inside. I think they're gonna get Bobby Matroff. Bobby Matroff's uh, man had position on him. Uh, that's number 50. I don't have him on our chart here, Steve. Anyhow, he, he had, didn't have his position on his man, and a uh, nice quick inside pass. Bobby had to follow. Him. So they'll take the ball out of bounds underneath the basket. They do get it in bounds cleanly. Now working against Mater. Mater, if you may remember, the younger brother to Scotty Mater who held the point position for the Bulldogs for three years and did a fine job at it at that. Did a super job. Logan DeLong here right in front of our uh, announcer's table. Nice hustle, goes after a loose ball. Tied it up, Panthers ball. You know, Steve, even, even as some of these other kids get some playing time tonight, that defense is still there. That core, that strand of DNA that, that's so you know prevalent in, in Bulldog basketball is there even with this younger generation. That defense is just tough tonight. I agree with you. And picking up the foul is going to be Logan DeLong as he tries to cut off the baseline against Corey Hughes. Corey Hughes is going to be a spot foul and only 16 fouls for the Bulldogs. So Panthers will take it out of bounds. Trying to get it in bounds. They do. They get it up between the circles. Working against Kurt. Over to Hughes. Hughes drives middle of the lane, right hand, no good. Good look at the basket, good right hand, just didn't fall. Under a minute to play, 65-34, back the other way. They look inside on the fast break to Matraw. Not there, knocked away. Bulldogs regain control. Logan DeLong wants it from the left elbow. No good, rebound, Lincoln McKinley. Here they come, 44 ticks left on the clock. Taking the three is going to be Hughes, and it is good. And Hughes actually picks up his first points of the evening with a three. Asked, Here comes Salina. Asked for the ball, got it. Threw up a three, nothing but the net. Knew what he was going to do with it as soon as he got it. Yep, just, just give me the ball, I'll, I'll take the shot. Logan DeLong working the high-low. Gets it inside to Matra. Matra drives right side, no good, but he's going to get fouled. He'll go to the free throw line for two. Everybody's playing hard, even in the last, you know, last minute of the game. R really hard playing between both teams. Salinas' defense looks very, very well coached tonight. Matraw goes up and lands the first one of two. 66-37. Well, and I think that what that is, is it's a, they saw the first team out there working so hard. And when you, the substitute comes in, you want to do the same thing. You don't want to let your teammates down. So an example was set early on in this ball game. You know, I think, I think Ben probably said, hey, we're going to play tough defense all night, and I think everybody heard it all the way down the bench, and they're out playing it. Matraw gets the second, so he makes them both. 67-37, back down the other way. The Panthers shoot, no good. Rebound, caroms off. Here comes the Bulldogs. They get it out to Kirk, and Flaherty's going to be content to get that ball 
and just pass it back out on top as the clock ticks down to zero. And that brings us to the end of the ball game. And you can chalk it up as a W for the Salina Bulldogs. And no one is more relieved than that than the green and white in those green and white uniforms across shaking hands right now. So lots of happy field house. Salina fans going home tonight with a 67 to 37 lead and win. We'll be right back to talk individual numbers and team numbers on your sports leader, WCSM. <laughs>